everyone, my name is Monique Maserell and I'm a fourth year nursing student working with the University of New Brunswick in St. John to create some webinars or peer taught tutorials on medication math. So today is part two of my IV flow rate drips per minute webinar series. Um, if you have never heard of this before, it might be best for you to check out part one of the video because today we're just going to be talking about another example and I'm also going to be going into another method that can be used that would be pretty confusing for someone who does not know what it means when I say drips per minute. So the objectives for today are to calculate the IV flow rate in drips per minute and also to recognize the use of the drop rate denominator or the drop rate constant and I'll explain that a little bit further on in the video. We're going to jump right into an example now. So our order is for theophylline 0.5 of a gram IV and 250 mils of D5W and we're going to be running this over two hours. We have a drop factor of 60. So the most important information that we can pull from that is that it's 250 mils, two hours, drop factor of 60. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to calculate our flow rate. So we know that flow rate is in mils per hour. So we're going to take our 250 mils and we're going to divide it by two hours. And we know that we have a flow rate when we do this math of 125 mils per hour. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to calculate our drips per minute. So we know that 125 mils per hour, and we know that within one hour there's 60 minutes, and we're just doing this to cancel out our units, and that is going to be 2.08 mils per minute. So now that we have our you know, minute flow rate, we can calculate our drops per minute. Let me just change my pen color. So we're going to have 2.08 mil per minute and we know that we're multiplying it by our drop factor which is 60 um, drops per mil. So our units are going to cancel out here and we find that we are going to get 125 drops per minute. And when you, when you calculate this out it's 124.8 eight drops per minute, but we know that we can't have 0.8 of a drop. That's just not something that we can calculate. It's, it's full drops. That's all you can do. So we're going to round. We know that eight would mean that we're bumping up the four. So it's 125 drops per minute. The other way that we can do this, we're going to get the exact same answer, but it's just a little bit of a quicker route to do it. So we are taking our, we want to find out how many, how many minutes are within two hours. So we're doing two hours times 60 minutes within an hour, so it's going to be 120 minutes. This way is the way that we don't have to find the flow rate. So we are giving 250 mils within 120 minutes. So that's going to, when we calculate that out, we're going to find out how many uh, mils we're giving per minute. But instead of doing that and writing it out, we're just going to add in our drip factor. So when our drip factor is 60 drops per mil. So these units we're going to cancel out and we're going to be left with drops per minute. Our answer is going to be 125 drops per minute. So there we go. That's how many you would have to count out in order to give 250 mils over two hours. The next thing that I want to talk about, uh, if you do not enjoy math and if me shortening it up is going to make it more complex for you, then you should probably stop watching now. But if you don't mind math, it kind of makes sense to you, then this is just a little bit of an easier way to do it. So this is called the drop rate denominator or the constant. And basically what it is, is it's 60 divided by the drop factor. So if your drop factor is 10, your constant is 6. If your drop factor is 15, your constant is 4. If your drop factor is 60, your constant is 1. So when you're using this, if you calculate out your flow rate, and it has to be running over a certain amount of hours. It can't be partial hours. It can't be 45 minutes. It can't be 30 minutes. It has to be over one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. It has to be over hours. All you have to do is divide your flow rate by your drop rate denominator. So it reduces a lot of steps. It makes it really, really easy. But again, if this sounds too complex, then you do not have to use this. This is just another step that we're taught that I want to showcase. So, like I said, it only works for hour times, not a portion of an hour. So we're going to use the previous question to calculate this out. So it's the 500 mils of D5W to be given over four hours. Our line has a drop factor of 15. Our flow rate is 125 mils per hour, and we got that 
by dividing the 500 mils by the four hours. So what do, what do we do with this? What does that even mean? Well, we can see that our line has a drop factor of 15, which means that our constant is four. So let's move on. So we have a constant of four. Constant of four. So all we have to do is take our 125 mils per hour, and we're gonna divide it by four, and you can abbreviate this as a drop rate denominator, DRD. And if you do this math, it's gonna work out to 31.25, which we know drops per min, which we know that we, we don't leave as this, we round, so it's gonna be 31 drops per min. So if you're okay with shortening things up, then definitely use the drop rate denominator if you're giving it over a certain amount of hours, if that makes sense to you. And if it doesn't, then it's not something that you have to use. It's just something that I thought I would throw in just because it does shorten things up and some people can have a really good grasp on it, whereas others need to write it all out and that's okay too. It's usually what I do. It's just totally personal preference. Everybody does math differently and that's okay.